how much demand is there for this uh, kind of finance for soft commodities? I mean, we're talking about stuff here like wheat, sugar, rice, and cashew nuts. Uh, how much demand is there? Because we found phenomenal growth the last six years in terms of commodity finance, especially with a unique approach that Stan Chart follows. Um, we, we like to look at the intrinsic value of the commodity as collateral for the loan. Um, and that allows us to differentiate between you know, normal vanilla lending or balance sheet lending, as it's also commonly known. And um, also, uh, you know, what difference is it going to make, John, to like food security uh, in the region? I mean, it's, it's a fairly big claim to make that, you know, you can help uh, countries get food security. What difference is this loan going to make? Chris, the biggest problem in Africa has always been the access to capital. And uh, with this loan we received from Standard Chartered, certainly it's going to increase our capacity to provide uh, better and bigger markets for the small grower in Africa and uh, just provide general liquidity in the trade finance market, which has always been quite a big struggle for operators such as us in an African environment. Is this your first time to get into this market? The group's actually been around for about 40 years. So doing the same kind of work? Doing the same kind of work. Um, we've always used a lot of our own capital. It's really the last five to 10 years that we've been accessing the capital markets. And uh, you know, with the help of Stand Chart, we're obviously looking to expand into markets such as India and China. Yeah, but I suppose when you talk Africa, you know, people immediately think uh, political risk and they immediately think, oh, you know, Africa is a dangerous place to do business. But Standard Chartered has been in Africa for a very long time. So I'd imagine you have a culture of uh, how to do business in Africa. How difficult was it to sell this? Godfrey, we've, we've got an extensive book of around $2 billion in agriculture in Africa. So th this, is, this is not new for us. Okay. We have a center of expertise in terms of agricultural finance based in Johannesburg. And then we service our 14 presence countries in Africa through this through the center of expertise. Mm -hmm. um, and as you rightly say, we've been in Africa for 146 years. We, we think we've, we've been around the block. You get in the hang of it now, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, one thing that did interest me, you said that some of the, this loan is going to um, save governments from their fiscus having to cover these sort of imports. Uh, for one of a better word, do you have any pro problem with that from governments? I mean, do some governments maybe think they're losing a bit of control over their food security? Uh, Chris, no, not, not none whatsoever. I, I think what, we, what we're here for is, and our brand promise also says that, is we're here for good. Uh, you know, it's not our intention to go against government or actually to challenge government policies. We're always within the law and within import, uh, import duties and tariffs and all these things. But we make sure all these duties are paid and, and we actually stay within the law in terms of... Uh, in terms of what we do and yeah. our exposure in Africa. Yeah, but so you are now in Tanzania, Zambia, Kenya, Malawi and Uganda. I suppose the next question is, so where next from here? Is there a plan to extend a similar uh, type of arrangement for the other countries in the region? Or should I throw that to you? Should I throw it to you? Well, we should certainly hope so. As Zan mentioned, um, the, I guess the big reason for us uh, getting this transaction is pla in place is uh, our similar uh, footprint over Africa. And certainly, you know, the markets we are looking at um, in the rest of Africa, stand chart of you know are there, and uh, as mentioned previously, you know, um, you know we've got new offices in Singapore, which we are looking to try and increase our trade to India and China, and, and stand chartered are there too. So, I think it's a win-win situation for both the bank and the export trading group. Mm. How was pricing around this uh, loan? Well, if you ask me, it's steep, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we always have to complain, but I guess yeah, it's reasonable. Yeah, we have to complain, because you know what, I mean, we're talking about sliding global markets right now, right? Everyone is under pressure, and yet Africa has not suffered as much as the rest of the world in this, and yet we're always perceived as riskier, and therefore the pricing follows uh, that we also have to pay the highest prices possible, so that's why I'm slightly concerned. We should be turning this thing around. Let's begin with you, Guy. What did you find? Well, I think, uh, you know, th given that Stan Charts had a long relationship with the group, from, fortunately, you know, yeah. we, we, we received, I guess, fair pricing. Um, you know, we started negotiations last year at the midst of the crisis. So, you know, it was quite tough negotiation. Um, but as you might rightfully said, you know, there are a lot of uh, misperceptions about risk in Africa. You know, we talk easy about Africa, but do we really understand the risk? So, all in all, I guess it's fair, but, you know, Stan Chart have promised to reduce the rate next year. And just one question here. I mean, this seems to be a fairly imaginative idea um, of uh, you know, funding in Africa. What other ideas do you have in the future? What sort of things have you got in the pipeline? I think from an agricultural point of view, we, we're trying to integrate into the supply chain. So what, what we've seen is that we, we can add significant values in terms of financing inputs, fertilizer, seed, insecticide, and diesel for commercial farmers, and also for smaller scale farmers. And then at the, at the back end, also facilitating the processing of the commodity to value add and benefic beneficiate the commodity on the continent, rather than exporting it and buying it back at inflated price. 